so thank you everyone for coming to listen to our talks today. Um, and thank you, Lisa, for letting me um, share some bits and pieces of my recent research. Um, so as Lisa introduced, the title of my rather short talk today is um, Sometimes I Get Lucky and Forget, Depression, Memory and Negative Bias. And more specifically, um, I would like to focus on the following three questions. How do people who suffer from depression remember self-related events from the past? What is the relation between the intensity of depressive symptoms and the memory? And also, are there any benefits of memory distortions in depression? Um, the title and at the same time the inspiration for this talk comes from one of my former patients. I used to work as clinical psychologist on the psychiatric ward and one day I met this extraordinary man called Zdisła. He was 49 years old, of a very gentle character, kind, polite, always smiling and making friends with nearly everyone on the ward including doctors, nurses, psycho psychologists, um, occupational therapists and obviously other patients. Literally there wasn't anyone who wouldn't like Zdisła. He always had something nice to say to people, and he had a rare ability to make nearly anyone laugh. At the same time, Zdisław suffered from a very rare psychiatric disorder called Korsakoff syndrome, which, cutting long things short, meant that his autobiographical memory was holier than a sieve. Zdisław lived 100% in the present moment and had absolutely no recollection of any past events including the key events from his life, such as his childhood, his wedding, his mother's death. But either he didn't remember what happened even a few minutes ago, who he spoke to, what did he do, or even how old he was. The, only, the one and only thing that Jesus did remember, surprisingly, about himself was his own name. One day I spoke to him, asking how he was feeling. And he replied, I'm fine. I know everyone here expects me to be miserable because of my poor memory. But look at them. They remember their lives very well, and it seems to hurt them. They tell me they suffer from depression, and so they ask me about my life. And I tell them I can't remember anything from my life. And then they ask, why is that? So I reply, it is because I am very lucky. So this conversation has given, me, has given me lots of food for thought. So far I had been considering good memory as a sign of health. And I had been perceiving memory distortions as undesirable burden associated with other mental or physical difficulties. Meanwhile, looking at Zdisław and listening to his words made me realize that perhaps in at least some circumstances it might be more beneficial not to remember. My patient was, living, was, li was a living proof of such case. Therefore, I spent some time investigating online resources dedicated to the idea, to remember <coughs> the, <coughs> the idea that to remember less might mean to live more stress-free. I have learned that especially in the recent years, with a growing number of people diagnosed with depression, the popular interest in a possibility of erasing memories has become significant. A variety of scientific and pseudoscientific magazines publish hot views about a bright future for those who want to stop ruminating their painful past. Many of them sound a little <coughs> scary at least, promising to use, for example, laser and gas techniques to delete your old memories and implanting new ones. This discovery made me a little confused, so I decided to do some more research in order to check what exactly is the relation between suffering from depression and the way we remember things. Most of psychological books on depression mention this or other sorts of memory problems, usually related to memory loss, as one of the illness-related costs. However, only few describe what exactly happens to our memory once we suffer from depression. 
memory problems in depression are listed next to such issues as sadness, anhedonia, which is inability to feel pleasant emotions, apathy, it's a sort of feeling of being washed out of all emotions, a negative bias in judgment, which is overly negative view of oneself and reality, social withdrawal, leading often to loneliness, also insomnia, that is sleeplessness, and anxiety. Of course, this list goes on and on. These are only few of um, most commonly described symptoms of depression. So what happens to our memory when we suffer from depression? Is it that we remember less? Is it that we remember simply less things? Is it that we find it hard to learn? Is it that we remember only certain events, but not the, not the others? And what is the relation between our self-related memories and the way we feel? At this point, some people may wonder why are such questions important or relevant in the first place. Here I point only some out of many reasons why the issue of memory problems in depression might be worth asking. To find the right answers could mean to understand better how the human mind works, and by offering a more balanced view of costs and benefits of depression, could help to baffle the stigma of mental health. It could also provide new tools for the therapeutic practice, especially in depression and, de and dementia management. Let's now take a look at the empirical evidence telling us what are the possible links between depression and memory. So the stream of psychological studies starting from 1979 by two psychology students, Aloy and Abramson, and still ongoing, investigating the accuracy of beliefs in people with, with and without depression, found out that the people who suffer from low mood and mild forms of depression often remember certain things and events better, more accurately, than healthy people. It turns out that the things which people with depression remember more accurately relate to the subject's own lives. This includes, for example, the amount of material that has been learned, the time which has passed whilst doing certain activity, or the type of feedback which participants receive. But it also includes past events from their personal life, such as a number of disagreements they had with their spouses, how often they felt misunderstood by their family members, or how many times they failed or succeeded in their romantic lives. It turned out that healthy people usually overestimate the frequency of positive events and underestimate the negative ones. And what does empirical research tell us about memory in people who suffer from more severe forms of depression? Here it turns out that in this case, memory problems affect people in a significantly more serious way. The studies which we reviewed link sever sever severe depression to substantial memory loss, sometimes even leading to dementia. This was more common in older age, but occurred throughout the wide age range. For example, the study by Bert and colleagues shows that self-related memories are subjected to memory loss in depression more than in any other mental illness, including schizophrenia. However, severe depression certainly doesn't strip us of all our self-related memories. Therefore, it seems plausible to ask, what do we remember in severe depression? Here, the most of researchers agree Affected people remembers, remember self-related past events in an overly negative way and have poor recall of positive events. More specifically, it means that in severe depression, our memories are affected by negative cognitive bias. We tend to interpret our past in an overly negative way, more negative than it is warranted by the objective data. At the same time, we seem to ignore the positive aspects of self-related memories and tend to focus on exclusively negative traits of ourselves. We ruminate our past failures and misfortunes, as well as expect more bad events to happen to us in the future. The most common cognitive errors um, are based on generalization and are related to memory distortions in depression, 
and include the following beliefs. My childhood was nothing but pain. All my life so far has been a series of disasters. Nothing really wonderful has ever happened to me. I haven't done anything worthy or constructive with my life. People in my life kept hurting me all the time. I had no control over my life at all. Everything that happened to me is my own fault. Obviously, such negatively biased thinking comes with both psychological and epistemic costs, such as anxiety, lower mood, social withdrawal, feeling of unworthiness, lack of hope for the future. And among the epistemic costs, we can find erroneous interpretation of reality, misleading conclusions, and poor self-knowledge. So in the presented context, it seems plausible to ask whether in certain cases, the loss of memory in severe forms of depression might be psychologically adaptive. In other words, is that what we remember hurts and as our self-related past memories affect our well-being to a significant extent, then memory loss in depression seems to come as a relief for many as it protects our self-esteem and psychological well-being. Perhaps then, this is what Zdzisław had in mind when he said, I get lucky and forget, or I'm happy because I don't remember. To sum up, we can say that in some context of depression, a psychologically and epistemically costly condition such as memory loss may both have psychological benefits by contributing to better psychological well-being, and have epistemic benefits by allowing the subject to acquire other true memories medi mediated by psychological benefit. This will happen when, for example, improved psychological well-being supports access to other less painful memories and helps constru constructing narrative identity of the person. Coming back to Zdzisław, after two years of regular everyday exercise of his short-term memory, it started to improve. It was possible mainly because of his positive attitude and eagerness to achieve new targets. It is especially significant because the short-term memory in people with Korsakoff syndrome is usually the most affected area of their functioning and hardly ever improves. So, in my talk I hope, to ma I, hope I managed to show, at least to some extent, that the relation between depression and memory is more complex than it might be thought. And it's not limited to simply depressed people remembering less or, um, and being poorly psychologically as a result. Although depression and dementia might often be related, might, might, might often be related, especially in older age, sometimes the loss of memory might also play an adaptive role of supporting personal coherence and well-being. Thank you.